Coffee. French press, drip, latte, black, espresso, double shot, single shot. You name it, everyone takes theirs a specific way. Today I'm picking up two. One for myself and one for Jackie Francois. Jackie is a speaker, musician, wife, and new mom. Today she's in Philadelphia filming a spot for a new project Ascension is working on called Alteration. She likes her coffee beige and gingerbready, so that's how I'm going to bring it to her. This is Caffeinated Conversations. Okay, so you just got here. You just came from Orange County? Yes, yeah. Are you exhausted? You know, actually doing okay. God God always provides and coffee helps as well. So <laughs> And you're traveling all the time. Like you're you were saying before you're Fifteen flights in the last couple months. Yeah, yeah, and so um, with baby, when I was pregnant with the baby, we, you know, I was I flew a hundred thousand miles within the first, I think, six months of the year, and then took a couple months off for baby, and then um, she's now coming with me everywhere. And I told my booking agent, I said, listen, we got to slow this down a bit, so maybe two to three flights a month, Seriously. and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you're traveling all over, so you speak all across the country, and it's you're speaking on relationships, on love, and to young people about their dignity. Yeah. So I guess, like, talk to me a little bit about the need for that. Like what in this current culture do you see the need being and is there a need and are, are the youth aware of, of these topics and, and their need to be addressed? Yeah, well I think, well Pope John Paul said it so beautifully when he, when he wrote Love and Responsibility, when he was, before he was Pope John Paul. Um, he said, in the future, the opposite of love is not going to be hate, it's going to be use. Mm. And we will use people as objects, right? So we do that because we don't know of someone else's inherent dignity, but we also don't know our own dignity. So I feel like, especially when I talk about relationships or sex and marriage, the first thing to always say, or even modesty and chastity, I mean, the first thing to hit is we all have dignity and worth. And when you know that someone is your brother or Christ and you are a steward of people and your brothers in Christ, um, brothers and sisters in Christ, you want to love them as people and not use them as objects. And uh, I think when you start to understand that, it really, it really helps you to see every person as a human being with great dignity, great worth. Uh, especially young girls, a lot of times girls will they'll settle or they'll let someone use them or they'll use somebody, whether it's a hookup or in a sext or, you know, all these different apps that now we we have to basically use people as objects, right? Um, when they start seeing themselves as having this great dignity and worth, they're like, wow, I deserve better than this. Mm -hmm. So I think that is, um, for me, when it comes to like Pope John Paul's theology of the body, his two main questions that he asks is, who, like, who are we and what are we made for? And we all have to be able to ask, answer that, like, who am I? I am a child of God, I am a daughter or son of God, and I have great dignity and worth. Absolutely. And yeah. so, I mean, obviously these topics are so necessary, and this is like something that the youth really, I think, are probably craving to hear and need to hear. I guess, what was your initial motivation to begin speaking, and particularly on these topics of love and dignity and relationships? I think um, my... My passion comes from the fact that I had a conversion when I was 18 mm. from youth ministry. And so even when I was in high school, I started helping out with our junior high. When I was like, I think I was a senior in high school, I started helping out with our junior high kids. And then when I got to college, I had just had a conversion. I became, I fell in love with God and start, I fell in love with my faith, started studying my faith. I thought, I wish every teenager knew this. Like I did not know my faith when I was a teenager. I didn't have a, an amazing relationship with God and I wish every teen knew this stuff. And of course, for me, I, I've just always been fascinated by relationships. Um, I love being able to say, listen, you can be single and be happy. Why? Because God is the one who satisfies your heart, not a human, not another human being. Um, and I want people to know, like, like I was a happy single person and my, my prayer was, Lord, if like, I want to do whatever you're calling me to do, if I'm going to die tomorrow, you know, then yeah. my vocation is in heaven. Right. You know, so, right. but, but to live every day full of joy and to live every day like it could be your last. Right. You know, not to always be anxious about the future. Mm -hmm. and So let's talk to me a little bit about um, authentic and inauthentic relationships and what the difference is. You said, you know, you were very happy as a single person and now you're obviously like married and have a beautiful baby. Um, but there's a lot of people out there that don't know the difference and wouldn't even necessarily recognize that they're in maybe an inauthentic relationship. So 
um, with your, your vision on that, talk to us a little bit about that. And I would say speaking to someone who's Catholic and you know wants a good relationship, I would say a few ways to, to the question that maybe you should ask is, is this person leading me closer to heaven or closer to hell? Okay, and, and one of the first steps is the person should be on the same page with you. You shouldn't have to be dragging them along in your faith. And not to say that you can't ever date someone maybe who's not Catholic, because I've had a few friends who were dating someone who was open, very open and very humble to the faith, and they, they were like, wow, the Catholic Church is so beautiful. But when you're not on the same page, it's very difficult. Um, it's very difficult with chastity, because a lot of times, um, I, I've had so many friends who were like, I'm gonna be chaste, I'm gonna be a virgin when I get married, also, I'm gonna be pure, but they date someone who's not on the same page, and that person's always kind of right. pushing goes them out the further window. and further and further, yeah. yeah. Um, so really to be on the same page spiritually, intellectually, emotionally, physically, mm -hmm. and that's a beautiful thing. Um, but I would say a good question to ask, is this person life-giving or are they life-sucking? Mm -hmm. You know, really, so true. I think a good marriage is they're your best friend with romance. Like that's my favorite definition of marriage. It's your best friend and you're, you're in love with them. Mm -hmm. um, because I think marriage is so, is, is so beautiful when it's with your best friend. It's still difficult, you still argue, you still right. were raised differently. But I think I can't imagine being married to someone who I can't stand. Like when you're with someone for 24 hours, <laughs> seven days a week, oh, and they're not your best friend, you would get, I can understand right. how people would be like, I want to kill you, you know? Okay, you're saying, you're <laughs> but great. not, but not really, okay. Um, <laughs> but but it's, it's someone who's your best friend. Yeah. And so when people, when I tell teenagers or young adults about like, listen, are they your best friend? Think about the girlfriends or the guys in your life. Um, why are they your friends? Like one, you can laugh with them, you can be yourself. You know, why wouldn't you have that same kind of standard for this person you're gonna marry? Mm -hmm. And then they're like, oh, okay. Well, when they think of it that way, like it's my best friend. It should be easy. When you're dating, it should be fun. It should be easy. Like, wow, this person, we can talk, we can pray together. I can be myself. I don't have to pretend to be somebody else. Right. Which when we see in relationships, a lot of times people, you know, put these masks on or they, they try to be somebody else and they realize it's not, it, it's not good. Mm -hmm. So with, with my husband, it was so easy. It was so easy in the sense that, first of all, spiritually we were on the same page and God had taken us both through a, a lot of stuff to bring us there. Right. We were in our later 20s when we met each other. Um, and, you know, Bobby had been in seminary and been really formed as, as a man of God and I had had a lot of stuff in a conversion and learning my faith. So we were really on the same page spiritually and that made everything else, man, it was so easy. When I met him, I was like, man, this guy is, Easily, it was my best friend. We could laugh together and be ourselves and pray together, and um, and obviously uh, we were very attracted to each other, and and so that was just it was so easy. We're like, yeah, this is the person I'm gonna marry, mm -hmm. and it'd be with for the rest of my life. Um, you also have your website. You've got um, which one? What you because you have two at one point. Yeah, which so I have my right like kind of a music and speaking one, which is JackieFrancois.com, and then Bobby and I have one that we kind of write blogs about relationships, and Bobby like writes about like how Captain America is, you know, the most Catholic of all superheroes, you know? <laughs> so we write all these different blogs on JackieAndBobby.com. Great, good, mm -hmm. so people can check that out if yeah. they want to get mm -hmm. more on, on you and every, all your different articles. You're always posting new things, so. Yeah, we try to do as often as possible, but sometimes it's like a month or two in between. So. Good, mm -hmm. so great. Thanks so much for sitting down with yeah, me. Yeah,